Google just had their very first Stadia Connect. They announced games, they announced lots of stuff, but most importantly, they announced the price of Google Stadia. We have been waiting a long time for this. I speculated on the price that first week that Google Stadia was announced. You already know what the price is. I put it in the title of this video. I'll include more details in the description. I don't wanna focus on what Google announced. I want to focus on the true price of Google Stadia, something that economics tells us. And I know you're thinking right now, like, okay, it's time to click off this video. This is not what I'm interested in. You need to keep watching this video because Google is recruiting millions of people into their artificial intelligence development program. And it's through Google Stadia. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the economics of Google Stadia. Let me take you on a trip down memory lane. This is the very first Xbox that came out. Um, the, it was not originally silver. Uh, my brother decided to spray paint it silver years after I got it. It came out in November 2001, and I was so excited to get it. My brother and I had newspaper routes. We saved up our money. We went at midnight to go get this Xbox because we were so excited about this. When Google announced that they were getting into the video game industry, it reminded me of when the Xbox was first announced. How everyone was like, why is Microsoft getting into the gaming industry? This is going to be a disaster. Microsoft played their cards right. They became a dominant figure in the video game industry. And so some people might be thinking that Google is coming in just like Microsoft did 18 years ago, thinking the same strategy of this is a viable market, we need to enter and get a piece of that pie. But I don't think that's what Google is doing. I think they have a completely different strategy than Microsoft did back in 2001. The difference in strategy is the difference between this and this. Okay, the hardware is a completely different strategy between the Xbox and Google Stadia. With Xbox, they just made another system just like the Nintendo, just like PlayStation. It was just another box to sit inside your house. And this is the way gaming has been the entire history of gaming. The hardware, the software has been in your house, in the same room as you, as you play. But with Google Stadia, what we're getting is the hardware is being processed on Google's hardware. Like everything is going on with Google and then it's going to be streamed to the player. And all you need is a screen and this controller. To truly understand why this innovation is important, you need to understand DeepMind. DeepMind is a Google project, technically Alphabet, I'm sure. Whatever the case is, it's all under the same umbrella. But DeepMind is the artificial intelligence developments project under the Google umbrella. DeepMind has made giant leaps in artificial intelligence development by focusing on games. One of their projects is AlphaGo. This was the first computer program to defeat a professional Go player. If you don't know what Go is, it is like chess, but a much more complicated version of it that people thought it would be impossible to train a computer to beat a human because there were just too many things that could happen. And yet they were able to blow past everybody's expectations on when computers could do this. And they created this program, AlphaGo, that defeated humans at Go. Was, this is just an amazing development. And now one of their biggest projects is Alpha Star, trying to teach a computer to play StarCraft. StarCraft is a completely different game than something like Go or chess. In chess, we have complete information. You know not only everything that you have done, you know everything your opponent has done. And so through that, you're able to understand every single strategy and the implications to some extent because you know everything that has gone on in the game so far. In StarCraft, that's not the case. A lot of your opponent's actions, especially at the beginning, are hidden from you. You're just making your own strategy and then you come up against your opponent when it's revealed and you only get bits and pieces revealed, right? There's lots of unknowns in StarCraft. And so it's a game of incomplete information, which means the strategy is much more difficult for a computer to learn. One of the problems with training Alpha Star is that you need data. You need examples of games so that way the computer can learn what kind of strategies work and what kind don't. Chess, on the other hand, has been around for centuries and we have detailed data on chess games where we can feed lots of that data to the computers without having to go out and get people playing chess games for us. That data is already available. We can train that program with what's already out there in this world. But for a game like StarCraft, we need to gather that data somehow. And that's where Google Stadia comes in. 
When you play a game on a console like this or on your computer, everything you do takes place in the brains in this thing. Every button you push, every joystick you tilt, it's all being processed in here. And that's a problem if you want to develop artificial intelligence because what you need to be able to see are the inputs of the players. You need to see when they push certain buttons. You need to be able to see when they're dodging to the left or right. And you need to be able to interpret that with the stuff that they see on their own screens. As long as this thing is in my house, Google does not have access to any of that data and they can't train their computer programs. That's why Google Stadia is such a big deal because they'll be able to capture every single button push and every single thing that you do on that game so that way they can train their programs to become better at these video games. Now you're probably saying right now, so what? Like when are we going to get to the true price of Google Stadia? Like why are you making such a big deal about DeepMind, AlphaStar, this background information? Because it's crucial to understanding the strategy that Google chose when they set this price. In the long run, Google is betting that the data that they're gathering from you is gonna be far more valuable than what you're paying on a monthly basis. That's why Google priced this so competitively. They want millions of people playing this game, donating their data to DeepMind's research so that way they can accelerate the development of their algorithms. And the biggest alarm here is that the more people that are playing their games for longer stretches of time, the more data Google is able to use to generate better algorithms. And the same goes for things like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Netflix. Like they want you on their platforms as long as they can so that way they can gather more and more data. So they develop it in a way that makes you stay on that program. And Google Stadia is gonna be the same thing. That's why they have these cool features like jumping onto Google Stadia or straight from a YouTube video or why they'll put in the Google Assist to help you get through certain parts or just all these ways that Google Stadia is going to be this convenient fun way to play video games it's because they want you on there they want you giving them their data and this is where the economist in me wants to give you a special warning and that's for you to think about the opportunity cost of your time that is the true cost of google stadia is the opportunity cost of your time what else can you be doing besides playing google stadia and economists are becoming really concerned about this some striking economic research that's come out in the past few years has shown that as the quality of video games has gone up the amount of time people spend in the labor force has gone down and it's being replaced one for one with those video games. So video games are keeping people out of the labor force. It's keeping them from having jobs, from providing for themselves. That's a huge cost. Like if you're giving up your job to go play video games, you are paying more than a monthly fee. You are paying a huge part of your salary, of your wages, to go and play video games. And it's not just your wages today. The problem is that this is primarily driving out young people, mostly young men, but these are youth in their prime. This is your 20s to 30s, where people are being pulled out of the labor force when instead they should be working on careers that develop future skills that allow them to have much better fulfilling lives and really promising careers. And I'm not just speaking in hyperbole. I was in high school when World of Warcraft came out. I remember working at the movie theater and people saying they could not work certain days because those were their days to play video games. I remember my freshman year of college, people playing World of Warcraft and not going to classes because they were so involved in that game. This was their opportunity to invest in their future and instead they were playing that video game. I know I sound like some alarmist, some cranky old man saying those kids, they shouldn't be playing video games. Like, let me just give you a disclaimer. I enjoy video games. I have a Nintendo Switch. I enjoy playing it just occasionally in my leisure. But that is not like the main thing that I do. I'm trying to get out there and make videos like this that give insights on economics. I'm teaching economics classes. I am writing economic research, right? I have a broad case of things that I'm doing and video games is just a small part of them. I'm really worried about people who allow video games to dominate their lives. And I'm especially worried that Google Stadia is going to become this all encompassing thing by making it so cheap and so easy and so fun to play video games. And they're going to be willing to do this 
because they want to develop their algorithms. I'm not yet convinced that these algorithms are literally going to be stealing jobs or like replacing people in those works. I think these algorithms are being developed for things that usually don't involve humans or very many humans. But I am concerned that they will be stealing jobs by giving you a cheap, fun opportunity to help them develop these algorithms at the expense of your career, of your fulfilling life, of your family life. And that is a big concern. And that gets us to the true cost of Google Stadia, your opportunity cost of time and your future development. Next week, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the economics of artificial intelligence. I've got more videos coming out about how robots can steal our jobs. I'll even tell you someday about the best $100 that my dad spent because it is related to these video games. So make sure you subscribe so you can stay updated on these videos. I am excited for them and I hope that you learn economics through it.